Verl is here, and it's time to have some fun in Pokemon Quest. So I've been doing pretty well apparently, 27,500 power, as well as beating the game and going on over 500 expeditions. As we can see right here, one of my challenges just updated recently, 501 total expeditions, which means I have a lot of resources, I've wasted a lot of time, and it's time to do some pretty stupid stuff. So in the insane amount of grinding that it took to finally beat the boss of Happenstance Island, I have amassed... 20 shells. 22 shells to be correct, but that means we get to make some bad decisions today. So I'm ready for it, guys, because the thing about legendary Pokemon is that they are fairly hard to train because you can't get another legendary Pokemon easily to use for higher amounts of experience and stuff like that. Also, when it comes to, like, the same type bonus, it starts to wear off when you start getting those higher levels, so maybe we'll just roll into, like, a level 90 legendary Pokemon and things will go great. Also, I still have a lot of extra resources, so pretty much by doing this, we should be good to go. And that's another crazy thing, is that as more and more time has gone on, we've learned more about how to get legendary Pokemon, what recipes affect them, and stuff like that. You don't need to do anything fancy to get a Mew, you don't need to do anything fancy to get a Mewtwo, like throw down this crazy rainbow recipe or anything, you just need to make a special Ambrosia of Legends. The problem is, special Ambrosia can still get you a legendary bird. So this is gonna be wild, like for all we know, we're gonna get like a level 75 Articuno and it's like yay or we could get a level 99 Mew maybe even a level 100 Mew so that's where the fun begins also I don't even want to know how long this is going to take to cook nine okay so I guess there's a hard cap at nine which I guess is pretty decent but there we go guys so I will see you guys in nine adventures and just kind of see what happens also as you can tell like now that I've beaten the game I'm just kind of logging in amassing PM tickets and we're gonna see how this ends up changing things but what I really feel is that the uh, bulk up into the sharing stone just a little too powerful just a little too overtuned because I kind of skipped a lot of gameplay and beat the game within a week so yeah now now I'm just gonna do some grinding and we're gonna see how that goes Actually, screw it. I'm impatient and we're making bad decisions today. Oh my goodness. It takes 10 PM tickets just to speed it up by one turn for one cooking. So yeah, I could just like hit give up and stuff and that'd be effectively the same, but nah. Let's just go and get this done now. There is our special Ambrosia of Legends, double X size. What legendary Pokemon do we get today? And it is a Mewtwo. All right, just another Mewtwo. Is it a garbage Mewtwo though? Come on, only one move. Ooh, ooh. That is a really interesting Mewtwo. So already, just like that, level 87 Mewtwo. I was kind of hoping for the single move because I've seen some really crazy Mewtwo's before. Like people that have the bingo bonus where it reduces your, um, it reduces the amount of time to do basic attacks by 50%. I've seen that. I saw a Mewtwo that had bulk up with time reduction 50% and then like, um, fighting, not fighting type move, but like psychic, I don't know. It was it was just a really crazy perfect Mewtwo. So there's our there's our boy right there. Um, let's go and see how that bingo looks, how these other stats look, and stuff like that. Uh, resistant to down effects, normal type move weight 20%, attack of psychic type moves 20%. That's actually not that fantastic of a Mewtwo. So there's there's a couple of ways you could do this. I could have either made use 12 of those mystical shells to try to farm a lower level Mewtwo. But now we're just kind of stuck with this high level bad boy. We have the Giga Impact, which actually doesn't do a crazy amount of damage, and then we also have the Psy Strike, which is a bit more powerful. And I think we just got the attack bonus. So 20% more on top of stab on that Psy Strike, but we only have one slot to buff it. So that means I guess we just do the times two. Maybe width on that one, and then that'd be it. But look at all that damage. Like, this is just going to be an insane offensive Mewtwo. Technically, the dual slot has a lot of weight in this game because of, uh, just like, if you look in the market, the Kangaskhan thing where it's like, oh, the chance of getting dual slot is higher. That's, like, one of the most expensive items in the game. So because of stuff like that, eh, it, it seems like it'd be good in theory. But, I mean, if we just make this all-out Mewtwo, maybe replace one of our Alakazams, then, yeah, we're going to see how this Mewtwo plays. Maybe it might be useful. I might try to re-roll for some stats, which means now we need to be making high-level Psychic Pokemon to then get a better chance at making all this stuff work. I'll see you guys in a bit. I almost want to keep this Abra and make another level 100 Alakazam. Look at this shameless monster of a Pokemon. Okay, I have to check his stats. I know this is about legendaries, and that's also why I'm kind of uh, checking all these guys. Also, there's a ha Abra hiding behind that 7 out of 8 figure. Um, I got four more mystical shells, which means we get even more chances at legendary Pokemon, and that is going to be, like, one of the craziest things. Like, this... All right, yeah, like, this is the late game when it comes to Pokemon Quest. That I might get another Mewtwo... 
and I am legitimately considering using that Mewtwo for training. Also, we don't have to use these uh, mystical or the rainbow matter every time. So this is a uh, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, and then we just throw in some random garbage. So that should still give us a special for the Mewtwo. And back once again, the, just this is how Pokemon Quest works, guys. You just cycle infinitely, and then things happen. Uh, we don't need to use rainbow matter. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. I'm showing in my guides. If we have all this uh, just random excess, it might be worth saving the rainbow matter just because if you want to spam it later, it ends up working out. So that's pretty good. Now I need to see that Abra. That that level 37, if it has good bingos, that could just like rewrite my entire team right there. Uh, sure, it won't be tanky. But that's why we have bulk up. And maybe it'll just kill things before things kill it. Isn't that the goal? Oh, there he is. He's like in that top left corner. I missed him a few times. All right. All right, Abra. Show me what you got because it also has like the perfect move set so i mean we just re-roll those moves we get something and the bingo bonus is psychic moves weight psychic moves weight attack oh <laughs> uh that's it's pretty tempting i wish like maybe that was like plus five percent more damage on psychic move damage but i mean that's that's some hurt right there we Let's not re-roll him. Let's, I, I guess now when you get to that late game, you just re rebuild your team over and over until you make some really fun stuff. All right, it's time to pull some shenanigans because our Pokemon turnover looks really interesting right now. In theory, we take this Mewtwo, we replace one of the Alakazams with it, and then we can actually start getting experience on this Mewtwo because it has so many stats. It's a 9, or it's an 8 9 power Mewtwo, so it's just gonna be doing insane amounts of damage with legendary stats. So we maybe replace one of our not as impactful Alakazam, but they, then, then we have to shuffle around our power stones and stuff. So the rest of this video is just gonna be rambling and optimization and stuff like that. But then when we do that, if that Mewtwo is strong enough on its own, well, now we can actually maybe go back to maybe 30,000 rank, uh, 28,000 rank happenstance and start putting levels onto the Abra and then what we do is by not is by using the Everstone on the Abra because that's one thing I forgot about the Everstone is incredibly useful because if you use that it stays in Abra which means it's easier to roll over the moves but you're still getting experience on it while you're doing grinding while you're waiting for more, more Abra to pour into it to do all kinds of other fun stuff with so I'm pretty much just going to sink my entire Pokedex right now into the Mewtwo and into the Abra to see what we get out of it also I didn't mean to back out like it's just it's just instinct as a gamer to want to hit the B button on like any menu that you disagree with but sometimes that just kicks you out for a long load screen so with this Mewtwo first the Mewtwo is interesting it's not the best it's not the most optimized but I think it is worth it for now and it could still be stronger than an Alakazam mostly because of the damage that we get now I think Psy Strike is better than Psychic and since we have a bulk up Pokemon maybe running two good offensive mo moves is gonna be good on the Mewtwo problem is it's hard to get two good offensive moves so I think I'm going to try to reroll this one first and let's see what our success rate is with something like an Abra. So let's drop in Abra here. It is a Psych-type Pokemon on high level. Okay, good. So when we, we're trying to consider the amount of burn that happens here. I also have just a lot of low-level Mewtwo's for the late game if we need to use that. Legendary Pokemon, 87%. Okay. I don't really care about Moltres, Articuno, or Zapdos too much. And since we're getting Mystical Shells all over the place, Legendary Pokemon are now as much fodder as anything else. Uh, that's 100%. What about this, you know? I want to try to use up our lesser Pokemon and then try to get that into the training. So yeah, the training mechanic behind this is just silly. And if we get Psychic, that'd be good because then we're just popping off with pretty strong moves. Oh, uh, that's Psycho Cut. I'll take a Psycho Cut. Um, a 2x Psycho Cut can stand on its own. The Psy Strike is pretty strong as well. Actually, I don't, I don't know the exact powers of all these because I thought Psycho Cut was a very high power for what it is. 311, yeah, it's 311, and then this is going to be a 129. I don't know how strong Psychic is, but now this is where, like, things can get really screwy, because if we if we re-roll this and it becomes a garbage move, then we might be stuck for a while. But I don't think we have to worry about experience. I think every Pokemon that we put in can go directly into training. So let's let's keep trying, guys. Let's keep trying. If we get Psycho Cut Psychic, I guess that ends the Psycho Cut Psychic debate for this Mewtwo, at the very least. Um... Ponyta is going to give us a 16%. If we throw in this Articuno, that's a 99%. All right, let's go. Legendary Pokemon. High value on this move learning. Let's see what happens. So that's going to be pretty solid stuff right there. And is Mewtwo done? Bulk up. Ah, uh, like... Now, in another world, this is the perfect Mewtwo, guys. Because look at that. Look at the diversity here. We could be as bulky or as damaging as we want. And in theory, this Mewtwo could replace our Machamp. Because if you're on auto, 
it's not gonna be that great. But if you're not on auto, then what you really, well, no, then we don't have enough share stone power. Dang, if, if this was, if this had two slots, because if I wasn't on auto, then that means you get one damage in between a bulk up usage. And at 50% effectiveness, it's still good. Maybe not. Maybe we don't use this Mewtwo to replay. So like I said, this, the rest of this video is just going to be a long ramble about trying to figure out how to optimize our team for the extreme late game now that we went and got ourselves late, level 87 Mewtwo. I'm just thinking that double damage might be the way to go on diversity. Like, we're, just, we're stuck. We're honestly stuck here. Unless we keep this because if Machamp goes down, at least we have a bulk up kind of supplementing that. But I don't have an extra share, share stone, so it, just, it doesn't feel good. Which is bad. Uh, Moltres, how much do you give? 78%. I'll take it. Uh, we, I'm trying to keep EVs around just because. So this Voltorb, 90. It's level 3 Tratini. Uh, do we even need the Voltorb then? No, we do not. See, I'm trying to balance out the value. Okay, so we put this Voltorb and we put this uh, Goldeen. That's 100%. So I'm just looking, I'm just looking for interesting moves. Problem is, Mewtwo has a very diverse move pool. So we could get screwed over right here by not getting a Psychic. And we get Shadow Ball. I don't like Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball is super weak. Um, so this is mostly just like the weirdness. Also, I need to clear out my boxes because I've just been hoarding Pokemon for a long time. So Ghastly is pretty rare, but not really worth a lot of value. That Dratini has value behind it. And then if we put in the Zapdos, 100%. 100, oh, 98%. Okay. See, so yeah, I guess we can save that Ghastly for like a couple, you know, topping off on a few more percent right there. And this is where we get into the move training disaster. So hopefully... I, I saw the Zapdos on the screen and it made like just glitch out for a second. It's like, oh, that, there's a Zapdos on the screen. Oh, no! How did we fail a 98%? What? I guess we should have used the Ghastly. Wow. Um, I'm trying to hold on to a couple Ghastly. That way we get Haunter. That way we evolve stuff. Staryu is a slightly rare Pokemon, so maybe that's going to give us a little bump. And then... Is that 100%? 72%. Ugh. Well, if we failed that last one, like, we can't fail a 72% now. You know, now I'm just now I'm just doubling down. I'm, I'm, I'm doing uh, self-destructive things. Focus miss. Ooh, and back to bulk up, of course. Um, I would like to keep these Abros, in theory. Wow, that, uh, okay, now it's bad. That's, yeah, so now we're stuck. This uh, Magikarp is probably worth a lot of value. This Lickitung still probably has a lot of value behind it as well. 85, there we go. And yeah, we can't screw that up. So there's a couple of Pokemon I don't want to get rid of. There's my Shiny Diglett, and then one of these is also my Shiny Squirtle. Yeah, I have a level 79 Shiny Squirtle. That's pretty good. Um, I accidentally got rid of my Shiny Machop. I accidentally got rid of my Shiny Geodude. And my Shiny Lickitung's down here. Okay, we're good. I was like, oh no, where'd my Shiny Lickitung go? Alright, everything's still looking good. Um, Psychic Side Strike. If we get both of those, I think I'll be happy with this Mew. I think it's worth it for this Mew too. Because of all the other resources that we have. Come on! I don't know what that is. Psy Strike. I guess we'll keep the Psy Strike. It's not the best. It hits a lot of things. But do we have the resources to keep doing this? Because Psyduck is not going to do anything for us. It's kind of rare. But it's not Psychic. That, that Abra is worthless now. So, so yeah, I guess we could just start using Mewtwo's. Like, that is what we are left with. We are left with just foddering over these limitless Mewtwo's and then hoping for the best. Fine. Let's Actually, before we go any further, um, let's make sure this Mewtwo doesn't have something crazy that could be worth investing into. Nah. That's, well, it's effectively the same Mewtwo. It's actually the same Mewtwo, which is not as high of a level. Because, I mean, look at all this. We have fight, 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 fight. So we have another 8-9 Mewtwo. It doesn't have as much dual socket capability, but again, I don't think it matters because we're not going to be bulking up regardless. And then it has two slots, and then it might get some damage. So, yeah, since we have effectively the same Mewtwo at, at a lower level, I don't see any reason to preserve this Mewtwo. And if we make mistakes... I've already made countless mistakes in during this game. Like, I, I put all my resources into Pokemon that I ended up rerolling. I had a level 100 Dragonite at one point. You know what it meant to me? Nothing. You know what I used it for? My level 100 Chansey. You know what my Chansey means to me right now? Nothing. So, I I am... That's just how I play. Uh, this Mewtwo... I don't know if I ever got a 3 slot... Like, a 3 move Mewtwo. Again, same Mewtwo, just actually more useless because it's all hit point bulk. So, that's like the tank Mewtwo that could never be... So we'll reroll you, and maybe we'll get a Psychic. Maybe we'll get something we can use. And then worst case scenario, we just never play auto, because we have bad moves. Come on, what are you? Recover. I'll take it. I will accept the recover, 
because under bulk up, recover strong, let's do it. I don't think we need to put the 2x. We can do cooldown on that. We could do width on the side strike. Or on... No, oh, this is Psycho Cut. So maybe... Would width be better? Because, like, it misses often. But if we did do the 2x, and Mewtwo's just slamming lots of damage. But then it... Actually, no. Let's do the, the width. Because Psycho Cut, I think it's more of an Alkazam thing to have two on it. But Mewtwo can bulk in there, then use Recover, and then we're good to go. So I will accept this as a good Mewtwo. So now this is where we kind of rewrite our team, and we check out the Alkazam. So again, boring part of the video... Um, which Alkazam do we not want because of the stats? So I think this one has resistance to burn, but the psychic move weight is good. So we have minus 16% psychic move weight, 100% resistance to burn, which is actually really good because burn can just completely wreck an entire Pokemon. Uh, actually they both have resistance. So this is, okay, this is the inferior one, I guess, because it's, it's effectively the same thing. It does have more damage though. And that's the thing we want to consider. Like, if we're giving up that much bulk... But Mewtwo has a lot of bulk. Like, if our team isn't tanky enough, we can just start slotting onto the Mewtwo. So I think we want to keep this guy. Even though he doesn't have as much cooldown, that means the damage output is roughly 10% less, depending on how the Psycho Cuts are being used. But I think this Alakazam is just fine, which means now we have to just dump all of our stones, make the perfect Mewtwo, make the perfect Alakazam, and then things should be good from there. Also, with hit healing, um, Mewtwo gets a lot stronger. So yeah, this is, this is just team balancing right now. Good. And I don't know what we're going to do with that Alakazam. In theory, this level 100 Alakazam is probably going to push my Abra into extreme heights. And that is if we don't get a better Abra. Like, this guy's still a really good Abra. What happens if we get an even better Abra at some point? That'd be nutty. Um, and then that means this Abra most likely going to replace this Alakazam at some point down the road. So now we have this. There's so many, like, menus you have to back out of. So it's like, we just went... Like, look at this. We just went to a three chain. You go team, training, and then you actually start messing around with stuff. And you have to back out through all of that. So this Mewtwo... Was it that one? Was it the green one in the middle? I don't remember, because the, the stuff is weird. So that's our one that has two hit points. That's one we're getting rid of. Okay. So we'll drop this stuff right here. It has 1122. I don't remember if this Alakazam was naturally stronger than my Alakazam or not. But now we're good to go right there. And I think we should put priority on the Alakazam because we know that this boy is already hard carry. Actually, yeah, it's technically a better IV Alakazam as well. So let's start messing around with Power Charms, guys. Uh, we just, um, I feel like if we autofill, we might just have something good because it's taking the best I had on all those Alakazams and making a really formidable Pokemon. So that crit rate is garbage. Never mind. Hit healing is good. Time to recover. I'm not as big of a fan of when it comes to this. Wow, we have 100 resistance to the down effects. No resistance to status, and then very high mov movement speed. Yeah, we can do better than this. We can do a lot better than this. Um, which ones are the garbage ones? So that's critical hit damage. Nah. We, where's our hit healing? Like, we have a hit healing healing from KO critical hit damage. I guess that's that's good. We need our critical hit rate ones. So whatever isn't critical. Oh, and that's a health. Ew, get out of here. So yeah, that's going to be critical hit rate. I know I just swapped out a hit healing, but we have enough here to where there should be some really good stuff. So we don't need the natural healing. We need to replace that with some... Oh, I didn't... Is this our bad Alakazam? No, this is our good one. Then where did all those other stones go? Oh, wait, no, they're on the Alakazam. Never mind. I thought, I thought we didn't clear up enough. See, so, yeah, unfortunately, our really good, like, mixed critical hit rate, critical hit damage are still under 800. But there we go. So, yeah, this one... See, we're losing a lot of power here, but then we're making up for it in the critical hits. This one is just awkward, awkward. Uh, where's a really high critical hit rate? Oh, 28. Yeah. So if we put this in here, that should make it look a lot better. So now we're at... 10.7% heat healing, which is weird because it should, I thought it capped at 10% on hit healing. Like, you couldn't exceed that. So, I think we found, like, a little part right there. The critical hit rate is 97. So, yeah, just with a couple of changes like that. Now, this Alakazam is a complete baller. So, I'm happy with that. And now, we can just um, dump everything else on the Mewtwo. I don't know. I, I guess Mewtwo with critical hit rate would be good. We still have this open one, so we can grind for maybe a better stone right here. And, of course, it filled in all this stuff with things we don't want. Wait, I was about to say, okay, so we have one man mandatory health one. And I think we can slide in a hit healing there. So critical hit rate, yeah, that's a good health one. It's not as much health as I'd like to see on the Alka or on the um on our boy, but that's okay. So critical hit damage, time to recover, maybe. Critical hit rate. And then we need a hit healing in there. 
oh, hit healing crit rate, but that's kind of low. And then the next one we can put on there. So yeah, right now it's just grinding to get like pretty much everything that we have, but then over an X amount. Ooh, critical hit rate, critical hit damage, or hit healing one. Tough. Actually, what's this? Rate, damage, recover. Okay, so I guess we can sacrifice some. It's like, that's probably just more DPS on a higher health stone, and then we can put in something else here, and then we're good to go right there. All right, so that's looking good. And then this one was going to be... I think we can just do time down on both of them, right? Because now the Mewtwo, normal type move weight. So actually, that normal type move rate is perfect for our recover. I forgot about that. We have that 20% resistance, which is all right, and then the 20% attack. So I think that's what we're looking for. I definitely think that's what we're looking for because we get fast recovers, and then we get fast hits, and then that's looking really good on Bingo, and then our Alkazam is strong. So let's see how this plays out. Let's really see if this ends up working. Now, I do, now do note I do have this set up on my Alakazam like this on the 2x with double width. Because the double width is really scary. And if I'm just like throwing out those attacks at 5%, I don't think matters too much. Even though it's 5% on top of 50%, so it's 7.5% reduction. This game is math numbers, and that's why I love it so much. That's why we're going to be here for 40 minutes talking about how to optimize my team in the current situation and climate of the game. And you know what? I'm okay with that. So now let's go and see if we can auto. If we can auto the same 35,000, which is gonna be tricky if we still have the capability to do this. I might have stripped some tankiness, I might have made us more vulnerable, I might have done some weird stuff along the ways. Now one thing I do is I bulk up first because it doesn't auto bulk up like that. So now we're going in strong, and now we're gonna see if Mewtwo's good. Leading off with 20, uh, with a th was that 23 or 32,000? I, 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 didn't notice but we when you lead off with that much damage already good so now we're healing through a hit right there that's all right we're auto attacking for 14k that's a 42 and oh we swung and missed and remember we still have the ability to get 1800 more power on this Mewtwo once it gets low 100 it's going to have another power stone activated and then we can also get rid of the healing stone that we have because we'll have better ones see so yeah, if we have two 900 sockets in there Mewtwo is just going to get more damage so then Mewtwo could be doing more damage to our Ala Alakazam while having utility inside of it. There's the healing, keeping it healthy. And come on, Mewtwo, use a hit. Do what you need to do. It's your destiny to swing for 37,000 raw like that. Actually, our Mewtwo just did more damage to our Alakazam and still has potential to go even higher. That's that's a good sign for me. Um, the champions in bulk up. So yeah, I wonder if we... Yo, if this change made it to where we can auto the boss, then that means life is about to get really interesting. So far, this is looking good, because, like, Mewtwo's staying healthy, and then that's buying all of our Pokemon time. Like, if Mewtwo accidentally gets in the front line and ends up tanking, then that means that Alexam or, like, Machamp could revive, and then we could play it out really well. I don't know if we're playing faster, though, because, like, we are just wasting some time right there on Recover. That's not optimized, but it could clutch us in the end. And then we do have the 20% down on Re actually 25% down on Recover. So that means we're cutting off a couple seconds, and then Mewtwo can come in and use Psycho Cut! Or recover again, but now it's alive, so it's still healthy. It's a mixed bag. And then the auto attacks are at least doing a lot of Mewtwo. That's why having, like, the, um, auto attack weight down by 50%, if you get that on any Pokemon, like, that's bulking up or using any kind of status, you win. So Kangaskhan can be really dangerous. Kangaskhan can, like, one-shot everything. So, again, let's make sure that bulk up's fine. Mewtwo just using that speed to get in there. 38,000 on that Psycho Cut, switching around into 11,000 Auto Attack, and then we're hitting a 34,000 on top of it. Oh, this is, this is looking good. This is looking good, guys. This is looking pretty solid. Uh, Alakazam's take a lot of damage. Mewtwo has a lot more tankiness, just innate health, than the Alakazam by, like, several hundred. So it just survives. And that's why, I mean, Kangaskhan can be dangerous like that. Just one-shotting fools. And if Mewtwo wasn't just screwing around the corner, come on. You just need to, like, crit. Mewtwo, just crit a Psycho Cut, and you're going to show the world. Also, this Kangaskhan's really funny. Like, if you get into a corner, Kangaskhan, like, misses all of its moves. Ooh! Still getting one shot, though, under that bulk up. So, yeah, Kangaskhan, just a little dangerous right there. But now let's try the boss. So, that was fairly effective. That was actually a good time, too. My average is around three minutes. So, we were still able to beat the three minutes. Mewtwo isn't perfectly optimized, so it could still be doing more damage. Garbage, Sturdy Stone, and, yeah. All right, so let's try this, uh, boss out. Only beat the boss once. You guys saw that video. It was a strange amount of luck and strangeness. We're going to see what happens. 
So we're just for quest completion, just like balancing my entire life right now. And let's do it. So bulk up, we're in. We got the stats. Mewtwo. Now is the proper time for you to recover if you want to. It just did. It can auto attack or can psycho cut. Like, I think the AI the AI just needs a little bit of tweaking, you know? If oh wow, Alexander just went down. So this is still scary. Um, we're not doing enough damage. Come on, come on. Champ, you can do it. You can pop. Ah. Uh, okay, that's good. Alright, so now we're, we're still looking okay. I think, like, if you're above 75% health, it shouldn't use recover. It's maybe something like that. Because remember, with the hit healing, Psycho Cut is effectively a recover. So technically, having recover isn't always the best thing. Um, Alexam, please. Oh. That kind of goes away me wanting to go auto because, yeah. Alright, uh, is Alexam. Who's gonna die? Who's gonna die here? But now, uh, bulk up. But champ, use bulk up. Everything's about to time out. Like, the AI is so silly. But we were able to regain our ground. However, we are clearing this a lot slower. I do blame the golem for that, because I don't think I've seen a golem with, like, the harden. So, like, normally we can clear out that first wave in about 40 seconds. So, cutting down that damage, not the most optimal thing. But maybe when we're in the face of a boss. Then, you know, if second cut misses, you're not getting healing. If you're using recover, that's guaranteed healing, so that's the, that's the min maxing optimization cost basis loss shenanigans i don't know i just threw out words and it started to maybe make sense the champ hey we need to get our team strong there we go so alexander's healing Orion's try attack was all right okay mewtwo this is the psycho cut you were meant to do yeah that dude i hate that i hate blizzard man blizzard just makes it to where you can't get in and do damage with a physical move which does make things pretty tricky so Porygon should be done here pretty soon. One auto attack, Porygon's done. We have Alexam focusing on Lapras. There we go. So at least we're still using auto attacks. Like Mewtwo still has good auto attacks even when it's recovering. And now that Lapras is uh, not being protected, it's still doing some pretty good, still, still taking a lot of damage. So this might be close. I wonder if we're gonna time out. That'd be bad. Mewtwo needs to use Psycho Cut more often. I don't like this coin flip. Really don't like this coin flip. But now the now this is the ultimate test. Legendary birds. Let's go. Bulk up. Needs to not wear off. Oh, thank. We 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 were we were a couple seconds without it. We were a couple seconds vulnerable. Mutes is still going down though. So that I think recover was a mistake, and maybe Mewtwo wasn't worth it. It you just you need to have a Pokemon that only has one move slot. If you're going, and even then, like, what? When would I use recover over Psycho Cut because of the end of healing? So this is just the uh, mental breakdown that I'm having right now as I'm watching all of this unfold. Natural uh, Pokemon quest play-by-play -play thoughts and shenanigans. We're frozen. The champ using bulk up. Is it going to come in in time? Oh come on! Where's that bulk up? Oh no! The champ, you just killed your teammates by not playing properly. Yeah, I think we're going to get swarmed, and it's going to be GG. The legendary birds are fairly RNG. Like, if you pick one off, and then you get an instant kill, it becomes a lot easier. And then we only have a minute to beat Mewtwo. I don't think it's going to happen. Nope. Nope. We're burned. Alexam's up. Use bulk up. Yeah, Alexam got the stats. Alexam went down immediately. This is over. This is over, guys. All right. So, uh, I'm so torn. Like, I want that Mewtwo to be good, but I think we're just better off farming for another Mewtwo, to be honest. We now have a level 87 Mewtwo. We can maybe try to get 20 more Mystical Shells, go for a better Pokemon, but in the end, it doesn't seem worth it. Like, it's I, I honestly think that unless you're, like, unless you're one-shotting, unless you're auto-clearing this, uh, this stage of the game, you're going to be better off just, you, like, yeah, unless you're auto-clearing bosses and getting Mystical Shells all the, day, all the time, then just... Try to go for the lower ones, maybe find a better Pokemon. I tried to make that Mewtwo work, and it didn't work, and that's what we learned today. So, guys, enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.